The war was lost until human hands grasped the forgotten blade. Captain Aaron Grant stands on the bridge of the U.E.S. Defiant, jaw clenched as he watches the remnants of humanity's fleet scatter across the star-studded void. The Battle of Proxima Centauri rages around him, a symphony of destruction as Cation warships tear through Earth's defenses. Proximity alarms blare. Red emergency lights bathe the crew in an eerie glow. Captain, we've lost the intrepid and the valiant, his tactical officer shouts over the cacophony of battle. High Command is ordering a full retreat to Earth's final defense line. Aaron's fingers dig into the armrests of his command chair. The bitter taste of defeat coats his tongue as he gives the order to withdraw. As the defiant banks hard to port, preparing to jump to light speed, a barrage of Cation energy weapons slams into their hull. The ship rocks violently, consoles explode in showers of sparks. Engineering reports critical damage to the warp drive, the helmsman calls out. We can't make the jump, sir. Aaron's mind races. They're deep in enemy territory, cut off from reinforcements. His eyes scan the tactical display, searching for options. A small, uncharted planet appears at the edge of the system. Set course for that planet, he orders. We'll take our chances on the surface. The Defiant limps towards the mysterious world, trailing debris and venting atmosphere. As they breach the atmosphere, Aaron spots something through the view screen that makes his heart skip a beat. The unmistakable silhouette of ancient ruins spreading across the planet's surface. The ship plummets, inertial dampeners failing as they hurtle towards the ground. Aaron braces for impact. With a bone-jarring crash, the Defiant plows into the alien soil, carving a deep furrow before coming to rest at the foot of a massive, crumbling temple complex. Smoke fills the bridge as Aaron unbuckles himself from the command chair. Damage report, he calls out, helping injured crew members to their feet. Hull integrity at 40%, life support stable, his XO responds. But we're grounded, sir. The Defiant won't fly again without major repairs. Aaron nods grimly. Assemble an away team. We need to scout those ruins for anything that might help us get off this rock. Minutes later, Aaron leads a small group through the alien temple's cavernous entrance. Strange glyphs cover the walls, depicting battles on a cosmic scale. The air is thick with dust and the weight of forgotten millennia. Deep within the complex, they discover a hidden chamber. At its center stands a pedestal, upon which rests a shimmering, sword-like artifact. As Aaron approaches, the weapon reacts to his presence, emitting a soft blue glow. Cautiously, he reaches out and grasps the hilt. In an instant, his mind is flooded with information, the weapon's capabilities, its purpose, its very essence. The Forgotten Blade, an ancient weapon of immense power, created to combat a threat that once imperiled the entire galaxy. The blade bonds with Aaron accepting him as its new wielder. As understanding dawns, alarms blare from their comms. Captain! His XO's voice crackles. Cation forces have found us. They're attacking the crash site. Aaron's grip tightens on the forgotten blade as he races back through the temple. He emerges into chaos. Cation dropships descend from the sky, disgorging waves of heavily armed troops. At their head stands Commander Rosa, her feline features twisted in a predatory snarl. Without hesitation, Aaron charges into battle. The blade comes alive in his hands, effortlessly slicing through Cation battle armor and deflecting energy blasts. His crew, witnessing their captain's newfound power, rally to his side. Commander Rosa's eyes widen in shock as she watches Aaron cut through her forces. Fall back, she orders. Regroup and inform High Command. The humans have found something unexpected. As the Cations retreat, Aaron turns to face his battered but unbroken crew. The forgotten blade hums with power in his grasp, a beacon of hope in the darkness of defeat. Salvage what you can from the Defiant, he commands. We're going to break that blockade and get back to Earth. This war isn't over yet, not by a long shot. As the dust settled from the Cation retreat, Aaron turned his attention to the monumental task ahead. The Defiant lay battered, but not broken, a testament to human engineering and the crew's commitment. Let's get to work, Aaron ordered, his voice carrying across the alien landscape. We need this ship space-worthy yesterday. For days, the crash site buzzed with activity. 
Crewmen salvaged components from the ship's damaged sections, while others scoured the alien ruins for anything they could repurpose. Chief Engineer Sarah Thompson orchestrated the repairs, her expertise pushing the limits of their resources. In his rare moments of respite, Aaron found himself drawn to the Forgotten Blade. He'd retreat to a quiet corner of the temple complex, practicing with the weapon as if it were an extension of his own body. The blade responded to his movements with uncanny precision, its blue glow intensifying as he honed his skills. On the fourth day, Dr. Marcus Chen approached Aaron during one of these sessions. The xenoarchaeologist's eyes were alight with excitement. Captain, I've made a breakthrough, he said, gesturing to the glyphs on the temple walls. These aren't just decorations. They're a historical record. Aaron lowered the blade, his interest piqued. What have you found? The civilization that built this place. They called themselves the Progenitors, Chen explained. They faced an enemy so terrifying it nearly wiped them out. The Void Heralds. And the blade? Aaron asked, glancing at the weapon in his hand. Chen nodded. Their last hope. But something happened before they could use it. They just vanished. As Aaron absorbed this information, Lieutenant Rodriguez's voice crackled over the comm. Captain, we've got incoming. Long-range sensors show a massive Cation fleet heading our way. Aaron's eyes hardened. How long? Two days? Maybe less. Then we've got no time to lose, Aaron said striding towards the Defiance exposed engineering section. Sarah, tell me we're close. The chief engineer emerged from a tangle of wires, her face smudged with grease. We're close, sir, but our shields and weapons are still operating at minimal capacity. We'll be sitting ducks out there. Aaron's gaze fell to the forgotten blade, an idea forming. What if we had a way to boost our power? Sarah's eyes widened as she caught on. The blade? It's possible, but risky we'd have to root its energy through our entire power grid. Do it, Aaron ordered. It's our only shot. The next 48 hours passed in a blur of activity. Sarah and her team worked tirelessly to integrate the Forgotten Blade into the Defiant systems. As the Cation fleet drew ever closer, Aaron felt the weight of command pressing down on him. Just as the first Cation ships appeared on their sensors, a distress call crackled through the Defiant's comm system. A human voice, desperate and strained, pleaded for help. This is Epsilon Eridani II. We're under heavy Cation assault. Any human ships in range, please respond. Aaron's heart sank. He knew their orders, return to Earth at all costs. But the thought of abandoning fellow humans to the Cations made his blood boil. Plot a course for Epsilon Eridani sex, he commanded, his decision made. As they broke atmosphere, the Defiance shuddered its newly repaired systems straining under the pressure. Aaron gripped the forgotten blade, feeling its power surge through the ship. They emerged from light speed into chaos. Cation warships swarmed around Epsilon Eridani II, their weapons carving fiery swaths across the planet's surface. At the head of the Cation fleet, Aaron recognized a familiar silhouette, Commander Rosa's flagship. Battle stations, Aaron roared. The Defiance crew sprang into action, manning weapons and bracing for impact. The first volley of Cation fire splashed against their shields, but instead of buckling, the energy was absorbed and redirected. Aaron felt the forgotten blade pulse in his hand as he guided the ship's movements with newfound precision. Cation ships exploded in brilliant flashes as the Defiant carved through their formation. On the monitor, Aaron saw Commander Rosa's ship turn to face them its weapons charging. Evasive maneuvers, he ordered. But even as the words left his mouth, he felt a strange connection forming between his mind and the ship's controls. Without conscious thought, he guided the Defiant through a series of impossible turns, dodging Rose's attack and positioning them for a killing blow. The Defiant's enhanced weapons lashed out, striking Rose's flagship with pinpoint accuracy. The Cation vessel's engines flared and died leaving it drifting helplessly in space. As the remaining Cation ships retreated, Aaron allowed himself a moment of relief, but the battle was nowhere near the end. Below them, Epsilon Eridani II still burned, Cation ground forces closing in on the human colony's last defenses. Prepare a strike team, Aaron ordered, rising from his command chair. We're going down there. 
Minutes later, Aaron stood in the Defiance teleportation chamber with Lieutenant Rodriguez and Sergeant O'Neill. As they prepared to beam down, Dr. Chen's voice came over the intercom. Captain, wait, the scientist called out. I found something else in the progenitor records. The blade, prolonged use, could have unforeseen effects on the wielder. Aaron paused, considering the warning. But as another explosion rocked the planet below, he made his choice. Understood, Doctor. But right now, we don't have a choice. With a nod to the teleporter operator, Aaron gripped the forgotten blade tightly. As the familiar tingle of teleportation washed over him, he steeled himself for the battle ahead. The fate of Epsilon Eridani II, and perhaps the entire war, now rested in his hands. Hands. In a flash of blue light, Aaron and his strike team materialized on the war-torn surface of Epsilon Eridani II. The acrid smell of burning plasteel and ozone assaulted their senses as they took in the chaos around them. Cation energy weapons lit up the sky, their sizzling bolts hammering against the colony's faltering defensive shields. Human colonists scrambled for cover amidst the rubble of shattered buildings, returning fire with outdated pulse rifles. Rodriguez, O'Neill, on me, Aaron barked, the forgotten blade thrumming with energy in his grip. His enhanced perception, a gift from the ancient weapon, allowed him to instantly assess the battlefield. There, we'll hit them at the junction between their heavy armor and infantry units. As they sprinted towards the front lines, a stray energy bolt struck the ground near Aaron's feet, showering him with superheated dirt. He barely flinched, his focus laser-sharp on the task at hand. The Cation forces, a sea of sleek battle armor and razor-sharp claws, turned to face this new threat. Their feline eyes widened as they caught sight of the glowing blade in Aaron's hands. Without hesitation, Aaron plunged into their ranks. The forgotten blade sang as it cleaved through Cation energy shields and armor plating with equal ease. Each swing left a trail of blue light in its wake, the weapons seeming to drink in the energy of the Cation weapons fire. Holy shit, Rodriguez breathed, watching as her captain became a whirlwind of destruction. She shook off her awe and signaled to O'Neill. You heard the captain? Let's flank these bastards. As Aaron carved a path through the Cation lines, Rodriguez and O'Neill split off, using the chaos to their advantage. They rallied pockets of colonist resistance, coordinating hit-and-run attacks on the Cation's exposed flanks. A grizzled man in a tattered colonial military uniform fought his way to Aaron's side, his face streaked with blood and soot. Colonel Marcus Harding! he shouted over the din of battle. Never thought I'd be glad to see the damn Navy show up. Aaron nodded, deflecting a barrage of energy bolts with a sweep of the blade. Captain Aaron Grant, UBS defiant. What's your situation, Colonel? Harding's expression was grim. Bad and getting worse. We've got civilians trapped in the central HAB complex, and our perimeter is collapsing. If we don't turn this around soon... His words were cut off as a massive Cation battle mech stomped into view, its weapons already charging. Aaron's tactical awareness kicked into overdrive. In that moment, he felt a new facet of the blade's power unfold within him. Colonel, get your men ready to push, Aaron called out. He raised the forgotten blade high, its glow intensifying. Waves of energy pulsed outward, washing over the nearby human fighters. Their weapons sparked and hummed suddenly gleaming with the same ethereal blue light as the blade. Harding stared in disbelief as his battered pulse rifle came to life in his hands. What in the name of... Now! Aaron roared, already sprinting towards the Cation battle mech. The colonists, their weapons and spirits revitalized, let out a fierce battle cry and surged forward. Energy bolts that would have vaporized a human soldier moments before now splashed harmlessly off their enhanced personal shields. Return fire punched through Cation defenses with terrifying efficiency. Aaron reached the battle mech, the forgotten blade leaving trails of light as he ducked and weaved through its stomping legs. With a mighty leap, he plunged the blade deep into its central power core. The mech shuddered, its systems overloading, before collapsing in a heap of sparking metal. As he wrenched the blade free, Aaron felt a wave of exhaustion wash over him. Dr. Chen's warning echoed in his mind but he pushed the thought aside. There was no time for caution, not with the lives of the colonists hanging in the balance. 
The tide of battle shifted palpably. Human forces pressed their advantage, pushing the Cations back step by bloody step. But even as victory seemed within reach, a new threat emerged. A sleek, midnight black Cation command ship descended from the clouds, disgorging a fresh wave of troops. At their head strode a familiar figure, Commander Rosa, her battlesuit dripping with weaponry. Grant, she snarled, her feline features twisted in a mask of rage. You and that accursed weapon have meddled in our affairs for the last time. Aaron stepped forward to meet her challenge, the forgotten blade raised in a guard position. It's over, Rosa. Call off your forces and end this senseless slaughter. Rosa's only response was a primal roar as she charged, her battle suit's energy claws leaving deep furrows in the ground with each step. Aaron braced himself for impact, the blade humming with anticipation. The two leaders clashed in a fury of light and sound, their duel becoming the focal point of the entire battlefield. Rosa's advanced Cassian technology proved a match for the Forgotten Blade's power, neither combatant able to gain a decisive advantage. As they fought, Aaron caught glimpses of the larger battle raging around them. Rodriguez had led a team into the heart of the Cation Command Center, sabotaging their communications array in a daring raid. O'Neill coordinated with Harding, using the colony's maintenance tunnels to stage ambushes behind Cation lines. The pivotal moment came as Rosa landed a crushing blow, sending Aaron skidding across the battlefield. He struggled to rise, feeling the blade's energy and his own near its limit. Rosa loomed over him, energy claws poised for a killing strike. It's fortunate you brought that weapon to me, human, she purred. Once I pry it from your cold, dead hands, the Cassian Imperium will be unstoppable. Aaron's grip tightened on the Forgotten Blade's hilt. He felt its power surge through him one last time, pushed beyond all safety limits. With a defiant roar, he swung the blade in a wide arc. A wave of pure energy exploded outward washing over the battlefield like a tsunami. Cassian weapons and technology sputtered and died, their advanced systems overloaded by the pulse. Rosa's battle suit locked up, leaving her immobilized and vulnerable. As the wave dissipated, Aaron collapsed to one knee, his vision swimming. The forgotten blade felt impossibly heavy in his hands, its glow dimmed to a faint flicker. Through the haze of exhaustion, Aaron saw Colonel Harding charging towards him, pulse rifle raised. For a moment, he thought the colonel meant to finish him off, but Harding's target was behind him. A deafening report filled the air as Harding fired, his enhanced weapon punching through the armor of a Cation assassin that had been poised to strike. The colonel's momentum carried him forward, directly into the path of the assassin's retaliatory swipe. No, Aaron cried out, but it was too late. Harding fell, a ragged gash torn across his chest. The colonel's sacrifice snapped Aaron back to full alertness, adrenaline overpowering his fatigue. With renewed perseverance, Aaron rose to face Commander Rosa once more. The Cation leader had freed herself from her disabled battlesuit, now wielding a wickedly curved energy blade of her own. Your parlor tricks won't save you this time, Grant, Rosa growled, circling warily. Aaron said nothing, allowing the forgotten blade to answer for him. As Rosa lunged forward, he met her attack with a perfectly timed parry. The two weapons clashed in a shower of sparks, ancient technology versus the pinnacle of Cation engineering. Their duel resumed with even greater intensity, but this time Aaron held the upper hand. With each exchange, he pressed Rosa back, the forgotten blade effortlessly turning aside her most vicious attacks. In a final bold strategy, Rosa overextended herself. Aaron seized the opening, his blade flashing in an arc that disarmed the Cation commander and sent her sprawling to the ground. As the dust settled, Aaron stood over his defeated foe, the forgotten blade held at her throat. The battlefield fell silent. All eyes turned to this decisive moment. Surrender, Aaron said simply, his voice carrying across the war-torn landscape. Rosa's eyes darted from the blade at her neck to the burning wreckage of her forces strewn across the colony. With a snarl of frustration, she nodded once. I yield, she spat. But know this, human. This battle may be lost, but the war is just getting started. As the remaining Cation forces laid down their arms, Aaron turned to survey the aftermath of the hard-fought victory. The colony had been saved, but at a terrible cost. 
Medical teams rushed to tend to the wounded on both sides, a grim reminder of the battle's toll. Lieutenant Rodriguez approached, her uniform torn and bloodied, but a fierce pride shining in her eyes. Sir, we've secured the Cajun Command Center. You're going to want to see what we found. Aaron nodded, his mind already racing with the implications of this victory. As he prepared to follow Rodriguez, he cast one last glance at the Forgotten Blade. Its power had turned the tide of battle. But at what cost? The war for humanity's survival was entering a new phase, and Aaron knew that the greatest challenges still lay ahead. Ahead. The war for humanity's survival was entering a new phase, and Aaron knew that the greatest challenges still lay before them. With a deep breath, Aaron turned to Rodriguez. Lead the way, Lieutenant. Let's see what we've uncovered. As they made their way through the war-torn colony, Aaron's mind raced with the implications of their victory. The forgotten blade hummed softly at his side, its power terrifying. He could feel it pulsing in sync with his own heartbeat, a constant reminder of the weapon's influence on him. The Cation Command Center was a marvel of alien technology, its sleek lines and pulsing energy conduits, a stark contrast to the ruined human structures around it. Inside, O'Neill and a team of colonial techs were already hard at work, sifting through the wealth of intelligence left behind by the retreating Cations. Captain, O'Neill called out, his face grim, you need to see this. On a holographic display, a map of the galaxy flickered to life. Red markers indicated Cation-controlled systems, spreading out from their home territory like a virulent infection. But it was the pulsing blue dot at the center of the map that drew Aaron's attention. Is that, he began, his voice trailing off as the realization hit him. Earth, Rodriguez confirmed, her expression mirroring the captain's concern. They're planning a full-scale invasion of the solar system. Aaron's grip tightened on the forgotten blade. We need to warn Earth. How long until the Defiant is ready for departure? Before anyone could answer, a commotion erupted outside the command center. Aaron rushed out to find a group of colonists confronting the captured Commander Rosa, their faces twisted with anger and grief. This is the monster responsible for all this death, one of the colonists shouted, raising a makeshift weapon. Aaron stepped between them, his voice carrying the full weight of command. Stand down. Commander Rosa is our prisoner and will face justice for her actions. But right now, we need her alive. The crowd reluctantly dispersed, leaving Aaron face to face with the Cation commander. Rosa's feline features were impassive, but her eyes burned with a mixture of hatred and something else. Curiosity, perhaps. You should have let them kill me, Rosa spat. It would have been a more merciful fate than what awaits me in your brig. Aaron leaned in close, his voice low. You're going to tell us everything you know about the invasion plans, and then you're going to help us stop it. Rosa's whiskers twitched in what might have been amusement. And why would I do that? Because, Aaron replied, holding up the forgotten blade, you've seen what this can do, and you know it's humanity's only chance against your forces. Help us, and you might just save your own people from destruction. For a moment, Rosa's composure cracked, revealing a flicker of uncertainty. Then the mass slammed back into place. We'll see, human. We'll see. The next few hours were a whirlwind of activity. The Defiance crew worked tirelessly to prepare the ship for departure, while Aaron coordinated with Colonel Harding to ensure the colony's defenses were secure. As the last of the supplies were loaded, Aaron stood at the foot of the Defiance boarding ramp, saying his farewells. We'll send reinforcements as soon as we can. Aaron promised Harding, clasping the colonel's hand. Harding nodded grimly. Just make sure Earth is ready for what's coming. We'll hold the line here as long as we can. With a final salute, Aaron boarded the Defiant. As he made his way to the bridge, he could feel the ship humming with nervous energy. Every member of the crew knew the gravity of their mission. Status report, Aaron called out as he took his place in the captain's chair. All systems go, sir. Lieutenant Rodriguez reported from her station. Chief Engineer Thompson reports the engines are primed and ready. Aaron nodded, his gaze fixed on the display as the Defiant lifted off from Epsilon Eridani II. Set course for Earth, maximum warp. It's time we took the fight to the enemy. As the stars streaked by outside, Aaron felt the weight of the Forgotten Blade at his side. He knew the journey ahead would push him and his crew to their limits. 
But with Earth's fate hanging in the balance, failure was not an option. In the depths of the ship, Commander Rosa sat in her cell, her keen hearing picking up the faint vibrations of the warp engines. A slow smile spread across her face. The humans had no idea what they were truly up against, and Rosa couldn't decide if she wanted to see them succeed or fail. As the Defiant hurtled through space towards Earth, the true scope of the conflict began to unfold. Aaron Grant and his crew were about to be thrust into the heart of a war that would determine the fate of not just humanity, but the entire galaxy. As the Defiant hurtled through space towards Earth, Aaron Grant stood on the bridge, his eyes fixed on the tactical display. The true scope of the Cation invasion force was becoming clearer with each passing moment, and the weight of their mission pressed down on him like a physical force. Captain, Lieutenant Rodriguez called out, her voice tense. We're picking up a massive energy signature in Earth orbit. It's like nothing we've ever seen before. Aaron's grip tightened on the forgotten blade. On screen. The main view screen flickered to life, revealing a monstrous construct hanging in orbit above Earth. It was a colossal orbital cannon its sleek Cation design a stark contrast to the familiar blue and white of humanity's homeworld. That's their superweapon, Commander Rosa said, her voice low. She had been brought to the bridge under heavy guard, her knowledge deemed too valuable to ignore. With that in place, your planet's defenses don't stand a chance. Aaron turned to his crew, his face set with grit. Then we take it out. Lieutenant Rodriguez, Sergeant O'Neill, gear up. We're going in. Within minutes, a stealth shuttle detached from the Defiant, carrying Aaron, Rodriguez, O'Neill, and a restrained Commander Rosa. As they approached the massive Cation orbital cannon, Aaron closed his eyes, focusing on the power within the Forgotten Blade. A shimmering energy field enveloped the shuttle, bending light and sensor readings around them. The Cation defenses remained oblivious to their approach, their sensors unable to penetrate the blade's ancient technology. Access codes are ready, Rosa said as they neared the docking port. Let's hope your human reflexes are up to the task. With precision born of countless simulations and real-world operations, the team executed their infiltration. The access codes provided by Rosa granted them entry, and they split into two groups as planned. Aaron and Rosa moved swiftly through the station's corridors, their progress marked by the occasional burst of weapons fire as they encountered Cation resistance. The forgotten blade hummed in Aaron's hands, its power responding to the increasing threat. As they fought their way towards the main control room, Aaron felt a growing unease. Each use of the blade's power sent shockwaves of pain through his body, a burning sensation that seemed to intensify with every passing moment. Meanwhile, Rodriguez and O'Neill faced their own challenges. The Cation security systems proved more adaptable than anticipated, forcing them to take increasingly risky routes to plant their explosives. This isn't going according to plan, O'Neill muttered as they narrowly avoided a patrol. Rodriguez nodded grimly. When does it ever? Just keep moving. We've got a job to do. Back in the heart of the station, Aaron and Rosa found themselves face to face with General Kral and his elite guard. The Cation general's eyes widened as he saw the forgotten blade, recognition and fear warring in his expression. So the rumors are true, Kral growled. The humans have unearthed a progenitor weapon. Aaron raised the blade, its energy crackling around him. Last chance to surrender, General. Call off this invasion and end this war before it's too late. Kral's only response was to open fire, his troops following suit. The air filled with the sizzle of energy weapons as Aaron unleashed the blade's power. He deflected blasts, created protective barriers, and even managed to form crude energy constructs to fight alongside him. The display of power was awesome to behold, but the cost was becoming evident. Blood trickled from Aaron's nose and ears as he pushed the blade to its limits. His vision swam, and he felt his knees begin to buckle. As Aaron collapsed, Rosa made a split-second decision. She scooped up the forgotten blade, feeling its power recognize her through her connection with Aaron. Without hesitation, she turned its energy against the Cation forces, buying precious time for Aaron to recover. Across the station, Rodriguez and O'Neill completed their task, planting the final explosive charges. They began their perilous journey back to the rendezvous point, 
engaging in hit-and-run tactics against the increasing Cation patrols. Aaron regained consciousness to find Rosa standing over him, the forgotten blade glowing in her hands. He struggled to his feet, exchanging a look of understanding with the Cation commander. Together they pushed through the remaining defenses and reached the shield generator. With a surge of renewed strength, Aaron took back the blade and channeled its power into the generator. The resulting overload cascaded through the station systems, bringing down the orbital cannon's protective shield. As alarms blared throughout the station, Aaron received an urgent communication from Dr. Chen on the Defiant. The scientist's face was pale as he delivered his warning about the cannon's power source and its potential connection to Void Herald technology. Aaron's mind raced, weighing their options as explosions began to rock the station. He looked at Rosa, then at the forgotten blade in his hand. A plan began to form, one that could potentially turn the tide of not just this battle, but the entire war. Change of plans, he announced as the team regrouped at the shuttle. I'm staying behind. I need to use the blade to absorb and redirect the cannon's energy. His declaration was met with immediate protests, but Aaron stood firm. As the first explosions threatened to tear the station apart, he ordered his team onto the shuttle. He watched them depart, the forgotten blade pulsing with anticipation in his grip. With time running out, Aaron raced towards the cannon's core, dodging falling debris and erupting fires. He reached the massive energy reactor, its otherworldly power filling the chamber with an eerie glow. Aaron raised the forgotten blade, feeling its connection to the ancient power source before him. As the station crumbled around him, he prepared to unleash a power beyond anything he had yet attempted, one that could reshape the course of the war and humanity's future. The blade's glow intensified, matching the pulsating energy of the reactor. Aaron gritted his teeth, bracing for the immense power he was about to channel. In that moment, poised between destruction and salvation, the fate of Earth, the Cation conflict, and the looming Void Herald threat, all converged on a single point, the junction between man and blade, the past and the future, at the heart of a dying star. Station. Time seemed to slow as Aaron's hand, gripping the forgotten blade, moved towards the pulsating heart of the reactor. The moment the blade made contact, a surge of energy unlike anything Aaron had ever experienced coursed through his body. Every nerve ending ignited, and his muscles seized as the blade began to draw in the reactor's immense power. The station shuddered violently, metal groaning and sparks flying from overloading systems. Aaron's teeth clenched as he fought to maintain control. His veins glowed an eerie blue beneath his skin, tracing patterns of light across his body. The blade pulsed in rhythm with the reactor, each beat sending a fresh wave of agony through Aaron's frame. Outside, the battle raged on. The UES Defiant weaved through the chaos of energy beams and explosions, Lieutenant Rodriguez's hands steady on the controls as she kept the ship positioned for a potential extraction. Admiral Hawke's voice crackled over the comms, coordinating the human fleet's desperate stand against the Cation forces. As the energy absorption reached its zenith, Aaron's vision blurred. Suddenly he found himself somewhere else entirely. Images flashed before his eyes. Vast fleets of crystalline ships engaging monstrous, shadowy forms that defied description. Planets crumbled, stars went nova, and the very fabric of space itself seemed to tear. Aaron understood with terrifying clarity that he was witnessing the ancient war between the progenitors and the Void Heralds. The scale of destruction dwarfed anything he had imagined. He saw countless civilizations rise and fall, entire galaxies consumed in the cosmic conflict. With a Herculean effort, Aaron wrenched his focus back to the present. The reactor was reaching critical mass, alarms blaring throughout the station. He pulled the blade free, its surface now crackling with impossibly strong energy. Aaron staggered towards the nearest emergency escape pod, his body feeling simultaneously leaden and electrified. The station was coming apart around him, support beams crashing down and fires erupting from ruptured conduits. Just as the pod came into view, a group of Cation soldiers rounded the corner, led by none other than General Kral. The feline warriors raised their weapons, but hesitated at the sight of Aaron wreathed in pulsing energy. Stand down, 
Aaron shouted, raising the blade. Its power responded instantly, creating a shimmering barrier between him and the Cations. General Kral's eyes widened, a mixture of fear and awe crossing his features. The rumors were true, he said, his voice barely audible over the station's death throes. You've unlocked its full potential. A nearby explosion sent debris raining down, forcing both sides to take cover. Aaron met Kral's gaze, seeing a flicker of something unexpected. Hope. Your war is over, General, Aaron said, fighting to keep his voice steady. This station is about to be destroyed. Come with me if you want to live. Kral hesitated for a moment, then barked an order to his soldiers. They lowered their weapons, looking uncertainly between their commander and the human wielding the ancient weapon. The Void Heralds, Kral said as he approached Aaron. You've seen them, haven't you? Through the blade? Aaron nodded grimly. We don't have time. Are you coming or not? Kral made his decision. Yes, this war must end if either of our species is to survive what's coming. Together, they clambered into the escape pod. Aaron's fingers flew over the controls, initiating the launch sequence. With a violent lurch, the pod ejected from the dying station, streaking towards Earth. Behind them, the orbital cannon exploded in a spectacular burst of light and energy. The shockwave rolled out across space, engulfing a significant portion of the Cation fleet. Ships tumbled out of formation, their systems overloaded by the blast. Inside the pod, Aaron grappled with the Forgotten Blade's power. Earth's atmosphere loomed before them, a fiery barrier that threatened to incinerate their small craft. Aaron closed his eyes, reaching deep into the wellspring of energy he now carried. A shimmering field sprang into existence around the pod, its surface rippling like water as it deflected the intense heat of re-entry. General Kral watched in amazement as they plunged through the atmosphere, protected by the ancient technology. The Pacific Ocean rushed up to meet them. Aaron braced for impact, using the last reserves of his strength to reinforce their protective bubble. They hit the water hard, the pod skipping across the surface before sinking beneath the waves. Darkness enveloped them, broken only by the ethereal glow of the Forgotten Blade. Aaron felt consciousness slipping away, his body finally succumbing to the immense strain it had endured. The last thing he saw before blackness took him was a brilliant light cutting through the murky water, the UES Defiant coming to their rescue. Aaron's eyes fluttered open to the stark white ceiling of the Defiant's medical bay. Every inch of his body ached, and there was a strange tingling sensation coursing through his veins. Dr. Chen's concerned face swam into view. Welcome back, Captain, the doctor said, his voice tight with worry. You gave us quite a scare. Aaron tried to sit up, but Chen gently pushed him back down. Easy now. Your body has undergone significant changes. We're still trying to understand the full extent of it. Before Aaron could respond, Admiral Hawk strode into the medical bay, his face a mixture of relief and grave concern. Grant, good to see you awake. We need to talk. The war may be over, but I'm afraid our troubles are just beginning. Aaron nodded weakly, his mind racing with the visions he had seen and the weight of the choices that now lay before him. The forgotten blade hummed softly from a nearby table, a constant reminder of the power and the responsibility he now carried. Carried, the soft hum of the blade seemed to resonate with something deep within him, a constant reminder of the transformation he was undergoing. What's the situation, Admiral? Aaron asked, his voice hoarse from disuse. Admiral Hawk pulled up a chair beside the bed, his expression grave. The destruction of the orbital cannon has brought the Cation offensive to a halt, but we're far from out of the woods. General Kral's defection has thrown their high command into disarray, and we're seizing this opportunity to push for peace talks. Aaron nodded, wincing slightly at the movement. And the Void Heralds? That's where things get complicated, Hawk said, leaning forward. We need you for the negotiations, Grant. Your experience with the Blade and what you've seen... It could be the key to convincing both sides of the greater threat we're facing. Before Aaron could respond, Dr. Chen interrupted, his face lined with concern. Admiral, I must protest. Captain Grant's condition is still highly unstable. The cellular changes caused by prolonged exposure to the blade are accelerating. We don't fully understand the long-term implications. 
Aaron pushed himself up, ignoring the protest of his aching muscles. I appreciate your concern, doctor, but we don't have the luxury of time. If there's a chance to end this war and prepare for what's coming, I need to be there. The next few days passed in a blur of medical tests and briefings. Aaron felt his strength returning, but with it came unsettling changes. His skin seemed to glow faintly in dim light, and he found himself perceiving energy patterns around him, like heat shimmer in the air. As the UES Defiant approached the neutral space station orbiting Mars, Aaron stood before a mirror in his quarters, adjusting his uniform. The man who stared back at him seemed both familiar and alien. His eyes now held a faint, otherworldly luminescence. Lieutenant Rodriguez's voice came over the intercom. Captain, we're approaching the station. The Cation delegation has just arrived. Aaron took a deep breath, steadying himself. Acknowledged, Lieutenant. Prepare the shuttle for departure. The shuttle bay was a flurry of activity as Aaron arrived. Admiral Hawk was there, along with a small team of diplomats and security personnel. General Crowell, looking uncomfortable in a human uniform, stood slightly apart from the others. Ready, Captain? Hawk asked, his eyes searching Aaron's face for any sign of weakness. Aaron nodded, feeling the weight of the forgotten blade at his hip. As I'll ever be, sir. The shuttle journey to the station was tense and silent. As they docked, Aaron could feel the hum of the station systems, a new awareness that both fascinated and unsettled him. The Cation delegation was waiting in the main conference room, their fur filled with barely suppressed tension. At their head stood Supreme Commander Thax, a massive Cation with steel-gray fur and piercing yellow eyes. Welcome, humans, Thax rumbled, his gaze fixed on Aaron. I see the rumors of your new weapon are true. Aaron stepped forward, his hand resting lightly on the blade's hilt. Supreme Commander, we're not here to threaten or intimidate. We're here because both our species face a danger greater than our conflict. Thax's whiskers twitched. So you say, yet you bring a progenitor weapon to peace talks? Curious, wouldn't you agree? Perhaps a demonstration is in order, Aaron said, unclipping the blade from his belt. Several Cation guards tensed, hands moving to their weapons. At ease, Thax commanded, though his own posture remained rigid. Aaron raised the blade, feeling its power surge through him. With a thought, he projected a holographic image into the center of the room. The assembled delegates gasped as they saw vast fleets of crystalline ships engaged in battle with cosmic horrors that defied description. This is what's coming for all of us, Aaron said his voice strained with the effort of maintaining the projection. The Void Heralds destroyed the progenitors, and they'll do the same to us if we don't stand together. As the hologram faded, Aaron stumbled slightly. Dr. Chen was at his side in an instant, scanner in hand. Captain, your vital signs are spiking. We need to end this soon. Thax's expression had changed, a mix of fear and awe replacing his earlier skepticism. How, how do you know this is real? that it's not some human trick. General Kral stepped forward. Supreme Commander, I've seen what this weapon can do. I've felt its power. Whatever else the humans might be, they are not lying about this threat. The room erupted into heated discussions, with both human and Cation delegates arguing amongst themselves. Aaron leaned heavily on a nearby table, feeling a wave of dizziness wash over him. As the debate raged on, Aaron became aware of a new sensation. The energy patterns he had been perceiving seemed to be coalescing, forming a ghostly image only he could see. A figure vaguely humanoid but composed of pure energy stood before him. Who? What are you? Aaron whispered, his words lost in the commotion of the room. The figure's voice seemed to resonate directly in his mind. We are what remains of the progenitors. You have taken the first steps on a path that will change you, Aaron Grant. But beware, for the power you wield comes at a great cost. Before Aaron could respond, the figure vanished, leaving him with a sense of both wonder and deep unease. He looked up to see Dr. Chen watching him with concern, clearly aware that something had happened, but unable to perceive what. Supreme Commander Thax's voice cut through the noise, silencing the room. Enough! Captain Grant, your demonstration is... compelling. I propose we adjourn for now and reconvene once we've had time to process this information. 
Admiral Hawk nodded in agreement. A wise suggestion, Supreme Commander. We'll return to our respective ships and meet again tomorrow. As the delegates filed out of the conference room, Aaron felt a hand on his shoulder. He turned to see General Kral, the Cation's expression unreadable. You've started something here, human, Kral said softly, something that can't be undone. I hope you're prepared for what comes next. Aaron met the Cation's gaze steadily. So do I, General. So do I. As they made their way back to the shuttle, Aaron's mind raced with the implications of what had transpired. The peace talks had taken an unexpected turn, and the true nature of the forgotten blade was becoming clearer. Yet with each passing moment, he could feel the changes within him accelerating, pushing him towards an uncertain future. The shuttle departed the station, carrying its passengers back to the UES Defiant. As Earth grew larger in the viewport, Aaron couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of a journey that would take him far beyond the familiar boundaries of human existence. Experience. As the Defiant docked with Earth's orbital station, Aaron felt a strange pull, as if the universe itself was calling to him. The next few weeks passed in a blur of debriefings, medical examinations, and tense negotiations. The fragile peace between humans and Cations held, but the looming threat of the Void Heralds cast a long shadow over every discussion. Aaron found himself at the center of it all, his transformed body a constant reminder of the power he now wielded and the responsibility that came with it. One morning, as Aaron sat in his quarters aboard the Defiant, Admiral Hawke's voice crackled over the intercom. Captain Grant, report to the bridge immediately. We have a situation. Aaron made his way through the corridors, noting how the crew's eyes lingered on his shimmering form. As he stepped onto the bridge, a hush fell over the assembled officers. What's the situation, Admiral? Aaron asked, his voice carrying an otherworldly resonance. Hawk's face was grim as he gestured to the main view screen. We've detected a massive energy surge at the edge of Cation space. Our long-range sensors are picking up... Well, see for yourself. The screen flickered to life showing a swirling vortex of otherworldly energies that seemed to distort the very fabric of space-time. Aaron felt the forgotten blade pulse at his hip, resonating with the ominous rhythm of the breach. It's them, Aaron said, his voice barely above a whisper. The Void Heralds. They're coming. Admiral Hawk nodded gravely. We've already contacted the Cation High Command. They're mobilizing their fleet as we speak. But Grant... We both know conventional weapons won't be enough. Aaron's hand moved to the Forgotten Blade, feeling its power surge through him. No, they won't. We need to get to that breach, Admiral. The Defiant is the only ship with a chance of closing it. Agreed, Hawk said. I've already ordered the crew to prepare for immediate departure. We'll rendezvous with the Cation fleet en route. As the bridge erupted into a flurry of activity, Aaron felt a presence at his side. He turned to see Dr. Chen, concern etched across his face. Captain, I must advise against this, Chen said quietly. Your transformation is accelerating. We don't know what prolonged exposure to the breach might do to you. Aaron met the doctor's gaze, his eyes now glowing with an inner light. We don't have a choice, doctor. If we don't stop the Void Heralds now, there won't be a galaxy left to save. Chen nodded reluctantly, then turned to prepare the medical bay for the coming battle. The Defiance engines roared to life, propelling the ship away from Earth's orbit. As they accelerated to faster than light speeds, Aaron stood at the helm, his body humming with energy. He could feel the pull of the dimensional breach growing stronger with each passing moment. Lieutenant Rodriguez's voice cut through the tense silence on the bridge. Captain, we're approaching the rendezvous point. The Cation fleet is standing by. Bring us out of FTL, Aaron ordered. Open a channel to the Cation flagship. The view screen flickered, revealing the face of General Kral. The Cation's fur was standing on end, his eyes wide with a mixture of fear and drive. Captain Grant, Kral growled, it seems our alliance will be tested sooner than we anticipated. Aaron nodded grimly. Indeed, General. Are your ships ready? As ready as we can be, given the circumstances, Kral replied but I fear even our combined fleets may not be enough against these abominations. That's where we come in, Aaron said, his hand resting on the forgotten blade. The Defiant will make a run for the breach, 
We need your fleet to provide cover and engage any void heralds that materialize. Kral's whiskers twitched in what might have been a Cation smile. It will be our honor, Captain. May your ancestors guide your path. As the channel closed, Aaron turned to address the Defiance crew. This is it, people. Everything we've fought for comes down to this moment. Whatever happens, know that it has been my privilege to serve with each and every one of you. The ship's intercom crackled with a chorus of acknowledgments from every deck. Aaron felt a swell of pride in his crew, even as the weight of responsibility settled heavily upon him. Helm, set course for the dimensional breach, Aaron commanded. All hands, battle stations. Let's finish this. The Defiant surged forward, leading the combined human Cation fleet towards the swirling vortex that marked the boundary between their reality and the realm of the Void Heralds. As they drew closer, Aaron's body began to shimmer more intensely, the forgotten blade pulsing with increasing urgency. Suddenly, the sensors blared a warning. Lieutenant Rodriguez's fingers flew over her console. Multiple contacts emerging from the breach, Captain. They're massive. The viewscreen filled with a sight that defied description. Colossal entities, their forms a nightmarish fusion of energy and matter, began to materialize around the dimensional rift. Even the largest ships in the fleet were dwarfed by these cosmic horrors. All ships, engage the Void Heralds, Aaron ordered, his voice carrying across the combined fleet communications. The Defiant will make a run for the breach. Whatever happens, keep those things off our back. As the space around them erupted into chaos, Aaron gripped the arms of his command chair, feeling the ship's systems resonate with his transformed body. The battle for the fate of humanity and all alien species had begun, and the Defiant was racing towards the heart of the storm. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.